The movie begins with Michael experiencing a strange dream somewhere beyond reality. However, it is soon interrupted by his alarm clock and a weird image of him shot and a lady screaming wakes him up in his sleep. Michael wakes up and begins planning his three-month-long robbery. He works at the casino for three months under the pseudonym Christian to get quick money and win from the VIP zone. First, Michael programs one of the card mixing machines to break and vomit out many cards. This causes the guards to investigate and require him to slip into one of the VIP visitors' rooms and grab their VIP cards. Second, to change the deck of cards with Michael's rated cards, he must take an elevator where one of the staff members carries the cards. Michael turns off the elevator and causes a blackout inside. As the elevator's power restores, he swaps the cards in the dark. He exits the elevator and walks to the VIP lounge to complete his theft. His final stage in the VIP room is to win the game and collect all of his winnings. He uses his sunglasses to see what sort of cards his opponents are utilizing using his rigged cards and technology. When a man called Alex enters the room and joins the game, Michael tells him jokingly that he should reconsider his decision because everyone else is serious and they both continue to play. After a glance at his cards, Michael concludes with a guaranteed victory. When he notices this, he bets all his chips and declares an all-in. Alex is also known as, with his cards in hand, Michael went all-in, the other opponent is reluctant, and Michael advises him, when in doubt, do not do it. His opponent takes his counsel seriously and places his chips in. As he wins the game, he mocks them, but the dealer removes his chips and hands them to his opponent, Alex. Confounded, he inquires about the dealer, who informs him that Alex wins. Michael examines Alex's card again, and it is a royal flush. Alex exits the room with the money, and Michael looks at his cards again. It was always a different card because the cards were all messed up. He notices Alex as he follows him outside the room. When he catches up with him, he shoves Alex against the wall and demands to know where his money is. Alex hands him the luggage, which contains papers and paperwork solely. Michael inquires of him again, but when he looks over at Alex, he notices someone else there instead. The security personnel takes Michael into custody as soon as they hear the commotion, but Alex manages to get away with the money. Victor, the casino owner, later straps Michael to a chair and interrogates him. When he questions Michael about the lost money, Michael attempts to fool him by claiming that he is a VIP customer and that Alex is the con artist who took the money. Victor's security guards repeatedly hit him in the stomach for his silver tongue. Michael thinks this is an incredible offer and tells them it took him three days to plan his robbery, but as the security guard tries to hit him in the stomach, he swiftly agrees to Victor's demands and tells him he will do whatever it takes to earn his money. Michael visits an old friend's casino to learn more about Alex. A resident points a rifle at Michael as he cautiously approaches the modest casino. Leon, one of his friends, notices and congratulates him on his visit. Leon asks the resident to stop pointing his firearm at Michael and offers him a drink at the bar. Michael sees a similar sign among Leon's various amulets as Leon is making the drink. He examines it and inquires about the amulet symbol. Leon becomes delighted and tells Michael to wait since he has something in his possession. Leon requests that Michael go into great detail regarding Alex and what transpired at the casino. Leon quickly realizes that Alex is a psychic who can alter someone's perception. Leon's allegation seems incredible to Michael. However, Leon tells him about mythology in which people like Alex may enter their awareness and a room of cognition where they can perform extraordinary actions. The chambers are their mind, and they can exit, going to the collective unconscious universe. Finally, while ordinary people can enter this world, they cannot leave without a special talisman. Michael gives Leon a chuckle and tells him that as long as the money is in the subconscious world, Leon will not care about Michael's antics. Before leaving Michael to continue working at his casino, Leon gives Michael a diary containing information about the supernatural and people with unique skills. Meanwhile, Alex visits Gordon with the money he won at the casino. They spoke about Michael's talent and respected it, but Gordon had another thought. He shows Alex a talisman and requests that Alex teach him how to access the subconscious room. Gordon has someone in mind to work for, and Alex is afraid that Gordon will require a companion to guide them both in the subconscious. Alex asks Gordon again whether he is sure about accessing the subconscious, and Gordon agrees to take the risk. One day, Leon shows up in front of Michael, wailing while holding a deer skull. Michael tries to persuade him to stop, but there has been no advancement in their relationship, so he is at a loss for what to do. Michael remarks that the individuals in question may be frequent visitors to his casino in response to Leon's claim that he saw someone exhibiting superhuman abilities. 
Michael has the concept of a casino and a bunch of supernatural individuals during a few seconds of stillness. He intends to win the money with these individuals. He studies Leon's diary and finds the people he desires. Eric is a privileged youngster with telekinesis, and Michael needs his abilities to move the dice and roulette balls. Michael persuades Eric to join the gang, regardless of whether he wants to live his life by chance or inherit his father's business, and Eric agrees without hesitation. Tony is the next character, a parent who works as a taxi driver and can manipulate technological gadgets. Michael informs Tony that his family is experiencing financial difficulties. Tony is skeptical, but Michael tells him of his authority. Michael joins the group after explaining his casino proposal. Michael inquires Leon whether there is a power that imprints thoughts into people's minds. Leon recommends the power of hypnosis to Kevin, a young guy with autism who is in a medical ward. Medical practitioners take advantage of his ability to alleviate depression. Michael books a client with depression and meets with Kevin. The nurses escort him, and Michael informs Kevin of his client's situation. To prevent conflict, Michael advises imprinting gambling on the customer. Kevin exhibits his strength, and the customer starts gambling in seconds. Michael informs Kevin that he needs him. Kevin hesitates, but Michael assures him that no one has the authority to keep him in the sick ward. Michael approaches him again, and Kevin agrees to assist him. When the park staff observes Michael pulling Kevin out, the two dash to where Tony and Eric are waiting. Eric uses the patience to keep the park's personnel from pursuing Michael and Kevin. The three of them climb into Tony's ambulance and drive away. Michael meets everyone at Leon's casino the next day and reveals his proposal. He assures them that what they are doing is lawful, which is why they have all trained in their coordination without communicating. Eric works on his telekinetic abilities to make his dice toss appear natural, but one of the regulars has forgotten how to play poker. Michael instructs Kevin to hypnotize himself and temporarily imprint his poker talents, but this will take some time. Tony's job is to keep Kevin out of sight of the security camera. Michael instructs the team and maintains their coordination. The next phase is for the team to coordinate without Michael's assistance. For a brief moment, Eric disrupts Kevin's focus, causing the banker and the regular to erupt. The surveillance cameras are activated, and Michael forcefully intervenes to prevent the mayhem. Moments later, Michael needs a plan for how they can communicate better. He suggests to himself that they can wear small earpieces, but Leon silently disagrees. He remembers from Leon's notebook that a person can read people's minds, indicating that she can transmit thoughts to people. Michael sets off to find this person's whereabouts. One day later, as soon as Michael arrives at the person's house, there is a funeral gathering, and they are transporting the casket to the cemetery. Among them is a young woman named Veronica, whom others harass. An automobile arrives out of nowhere and begins after Veronica. She flees, and Michael pursues. Veronica escapes the men who are after her, and Michael quickly locates her. He retrieves her headphones, which she had dropped during her chase. She accepts the headphones and Michael informs her that he is not one of the men pursuing her. He asks her why she is being followed and wants to explain the plan. Veronica warns him to keep away from her since she knows Michael's debt and what occurred at the casino. Michael puts the puzzle pieces together and learns that Veronica is the person's granddaughter he was looking for in the first place. The men hunting her found her and pursued Veronica. Michael attempted to stop them and assisted Veronica in escaping. Three days before Michael's loan is due, Gordon intends to steal from an art museum. He notices a street artist and museum employees moving paintings. The theft begins as he approaches the staff worker. A hypnotist comes to Gordon and begs him to explore the subconscious world. Gordon collapses to the ground and staff members become concerned about his condition. At the same time, the street artist abruptly stops painting and begins a new one. One of the staff members replaces the street artist's painting with a case of paintings from the truck. Gordon comes to when he regains consciousness and approaches the street artist. He inspects the picture and gladly pays for it. He exits the area with a confused street artist. Veronica is introduced to the team by Michael. Michael believes coordinating with the team will be easier in a public setting. Veronica goes into her subconscious mind and concentrates on Michael, Eric, Tony, and Kevin. Michael instructs Veronica to tell Eric to ring the tower bell. The next step is to mesmerize someone by shouting for aid. Then Tony makes a streetlight short circuit, and Michael instructs Veronica to shout earthquake to the public mentally. People worry as they carry out Michael's commands. The others are astounded by the commotion they have produced, and Michael commends them and offers them a drink. A few moments later, Michael makes a plan for each role. Veronica will play as Michael's fiancé, and Tony will take on the role of a transportation manager. 
On the other hand, Kevin will play a kit with a trust fund, and Eric may play himself while making purchases with his father's money. Michael has three days left while the team decides what to wear to the casino in suits and other attire. Michael and Veronica arrive at the casino around midnight the next day. They can find the others playing other games, thanks to Veronica. With everything in place, they intend to win everything at the casino. They will play roulette in the first game. Michael instructs Veronica to instruct Tony to turn the camera away and informs Eric that they require a 10. They swiftly get a 10 and win a bet, thanks to Eric's telepathy. For a while, Michael tells Veronica in his head that they make a good team and will eventually understand one another. When Michael and Veronica win, they leave the roulette table and join Kevin at another table. Tony will turn the camera away again, and Kevin will captivate the dealer for an easy win. Meanwhile, Eric is spotted drinking several times and continues to win each turn. Tony becomes obsessed with winning and tampers with every roulette machine in the hopes of hitting the jackpot. It causes security to intervene and captures the two. The crew drags them. They ride the elevator to speak privately with them at Michael's request. Michael encourages Eric and Tony to calm down since their actions may raise suspicion. If they want to win the money, they should listen to Michael and not rush things. They scatter to escape suspicion and plan to reconvene at the craps table. For a brief moment, all of them are in place and begin their regular strategy. Michael is at the table while Kevin hypnotizes the dealer. Tony then turns away from the camera and Eric telepathically moves the dice according to Michael's demands. The team then takes their winnings and exits the casino. They celebrate on the beach and spend time together. Michael approaches Veronica and inquires as to what she intends to do next. He informs her that he has a different idea. Veronica declines his offer and Michael tells her she can do more than live in terror. Michael transfers the money to Victor and pays off his obligation with only one day left. He travels in a car with Tony, Eric, Kevin and Veronica. Cars are following them on the road and forced to stop. Victor is hunting them. He ties them up and wants Michael's squad to work for him, but they refuse. Victor pulls Michael aside and informs him that they are not taking his offer seriously. He has removed Michael from the squad and intends to murder him instead. Eric, Tony, Kevin and Veronica are heartbroken because they want to save Michael, but Victor's bodyguards prevent them from doing so. Victor orders his security to kidnap Michael and shoot him in the back from a nearby hill. Eric, Tony, Kevin and Veronica witnessed the event and abducted them. Each of them wept for Michael in their subconscious rooms, but they could not find Veronica. Meanwhile, a van pulls up to the alley and drags a man in a sack. Gordon meets Michael after revealing that he is alive. Michael recognizes him as his father and realizes that his botched heist and debt were entirely his fault. He wants to leave, enraged by this, but Gordon stops him by telling him how to penetrate the subconscious. Eric, Tony, and Kevin take a break from working at Victor's Casino later. Kevin sits on the sofa to rest as Eric and Tony debate what they should do next. They heard noises coming from the bathroom and investigated, discovering a plumber repairing the toilet. They interrogate and inform him that the restroom is clogged and needs repair. Eric and Tony recognize the plumber's voice, and as the plumber shows himself, it is Michael in disguise. The two of them are relieved to see Michael alive and healthy. Michael observes that Veronica is not with them thus, he inquires about her whereabouts. They inform him that she has refused to work for Victor and has been in a coma for several days due to a trip to her subconscious room. Michael tells them they can get everyone and the money out of the casino if they devise a strategy. Eric, Tony, and Kevin return to work as casino employees 30 minutes later. Victor is walking around the casino when he notices the light flickering. Tony approaches him and declares his intention to resign. Kevin intends to do the same, as does Eric. Victor instructs his security to place him in the room and informs them that he will speak with them later. The three are led into a room and await Michael to begin the plan. Michael enters the area disguised as one of the guards, he disables the elevators, and Kevin hypnotizes the guard and instructs him to protect the staircase. When Michael asks Tony what floor Veronica is on, Eric and Tony must access the safe, the security guards it with lasers. Later, Michael returns with Veronica and rejoins Kevin. The two go to Tony and Eric and witness Eric approach the safe. All he needs to do is unlock it. However, he failed the first time, which tipped off the guards. He calms down and opens the safe on the second try. They went inside before the guards arrived. Tony used his skills to lock the safe, and the guards had no choice but to wait for them to emerge. Eric inquires about Michael's following plans. Tony doubts Michael's proposal and warns him that it is too dangerous. Kevin fears losing Michael again and believes he may die this time. 
Michael tells them it is a danger he is ready to take and begs Kevin for assistance entering his subconscious room. Kevin agrees to assist him a few minutes later, forcing Michael into his subconscious. When Michael opens his eyes, he sees himself floating in a white space. He notices his possessions flying and hears himself discussing his history. Soon after, Michael notices a door in the distance and attempts to enter it. When he enters, he finds himself in a large field with doors around him. It is the same countryside he saw in a dream seven days earlier. Suddenly, a giant cloud appears in the area and transforms into a snowfall. Michael flees, but he is unable to outrun it. He extends his hand to stop the storm, which evaporates around him. Michael takes a seat, shuts his eyes, and muffles where Veronica is. As Michael considers Veronica, the landscape transforms, the ground shatters, and a small village alters the landscape. He opens his eyes, perplexed by what has occurred. Michael glances around the city and notices Veronica standing in the center, staring at the strange sky. He tries to approach her, but a force barrier protects her. Michael attempts to talk to her, but she cannot hear him. He tries to shift the scenery, just as he did in his search for Veronica. He alters the scene to show how they met. When Michael extends his hand to Veronica, she recalls how she felt with Michael. The image transforms into a large field with doors everywhere as Veronica reaches Michael's hand, the same scene as when Michael enters the subconscious. Veronica questions Michael about why he put his life in danger for her. Michael responds by telling his belief that humans have limits to their ability to accomplish the impossible but that his perspective completely shifted after meeting Veronica and the other people. Veronica notices the entrance to her subconscious, but Michael must remain since he must find his way out. He tells her she must believe him, and the two kiss before leaving. Michael explores the subconscious world and recalls his talk with Gordon regarding the mind. Gordon informs him that once someone reaches the subconscious, they only have eight minutes to survive, after which they forget about their existence. They require the most trusted partner to remind them of who they are, and he gives Michael the talisman he requires for the rest of his life. Michael jokes that he needs a father, but the talisman also benefits him. In his subconscious, Michael notices a familiar guy walking through the field. He chases him, and the scene shifts to the casino, where Victor captures Michael and his buddies. Michael approaches the man, and it is Ale. Ale informs Michael about the possibility of him creating an illusion in someone's consciousness and must locate it. He tells him this since he saved him from Victor's clutches, and Michael is presumed dead then. Michael regains consciousness and sees Veronica and the others. Eric, Tony, and Kevin rejoice upon Michael's return, and Michael informs everyone that they are free to leave the safe room. Michael tells Tony to open the safe, then Tony tells Michael to trust him. The guards are gone, and they cannot see them anymore as soon as they open the safe. Before returning to the actual world, Michael attempts to locate Victor's subconscious room, shifting his perception and believing that they have exited the safe room. Simultaneously, Victor informs the guards that Michael and the others fled from the back, leaving the safe unattended. Michael and the others leave the casino with the money and go to the beach to meet Alex. The movie ends with Michael and Gordon, after being at odds for three months, finally resolving their differences as they walk down an alley to start their plan. They then initiate a robbery after two hypnotists persuade them to delve into their subconscious minds. 